So uh, an emergency protocol is a paper or a uh, electronic record that uh, the patient and the family can use to have urgent indication on some urgent situation that the patient can face out of the setting of his classical physician or classical department where he is known. I would say that this protocol was initiated discussing with families that were, were traveling or that had to call an emergency team that didn't know the patient. And basically, it is very important in rare diseases like a Dravet syndrome that is a rare epilepsy where every physician or emergency phys physician is might not be aware of this disease and what he should do facing this situation. And when we were discussing about that in France first and then at a European level with the Federation of Dravet syndrome in Europe, we thought that we need a kind of a checklist that should be done, that should be given for the the patient that should be kept in his record and that can be presented and point that is very important that this protocol or this emergency protocol should be inspired by this general draft and should be adapted to each regional or national context for the medications that can be used but more importantly, I would say it should be adapted for each patient because it is part of what we call today the personalized medicine. Because what could be a very good protocol for patient A having the same disease as patient B could not be the best also for patient B. So mainly what should be on this protocol is the disease, a very small summary of what it is. Number two, what should be on are the emergency contact for the family and for the carer, caregiver of the patient, but also for the expert center or the reference center where he is followed. What should be on also are the medication that he is taking and that we should not stop abruptly by for any reason. And what should be on is his situation. A patient that cannot talk, that cannot walk. We don't have to evaluate him in an urgent situation as not talking is something acute. So this should be also notified. And finally, I would say the heart of this emergency protocol is to state in which condition, what to do, and what to give as medication. I will give an example. If the patient is having a long-lasting seizure, what we should be able to understand very quickly from this protocol that we should give him this kind of rescue medication, benzodiazepine, for instance, in the situation of Dravet syndrome, and at which dose we should give it to him, knowing that the dose should be also expressed corresponding to the weight and what is finally very important, that this protocol should be signed by the referring physician in a very clear way and should be updated at each visit because the needs might change, the weight might change, and so on. The work with the families is very important in these diseases because of the, all the symptoms, but one of the major symptoms where the families should be able to act as medical 
persons is to give the rescue medication because we have very clear studies and very clear evidence that what is the most important factor that will impact the outcome of this long-lasting seizure if it will last too much and that will might alter the brain functioning it is the time where we give this rescue medication and this medication should be given optimally in a window that goes from three five minutes till 10 15 minutes so what we usually do is not only prescribe this medication for the family but the epilepsy nurse for instance or the doctor in places where there is no epilepsy nurse should explain for the family how to prepare this medication and how to give it. For instance, there are in buccal medications, but we should know that the syringe of this buccal medication, you should not push in the all setting of the anxiety and the fear of the seizure very quickly because the product might splash and goes out of the mouse. The patient should be in a certain position and the, the, it should be a, a, a smooth pressure in order to deliver the product. So these are very tiny things, but if the family is not well prepared in normal setting without the seizure going on, it will be very difficult for them to do it in an emergency setting, and it will be even harder for them to explain it to other caregivers that might be in charge to give this to the child when they are not present, as the grandmother, as the auntie, as the school teacher, and so on. We are in a situation with patients with Dravet syndrome and their families, where families get so much involved. And we are in some instances transforming the parents in doctors and nurses and professionals. So if I think about really two messages to give for the families, the number one is to discuss with their doctors and epilepsy nurse when they have some fears, when they do not have, uh, not the total control, no one will ever have the total control, unfortunately, but when they have doubts, they should have things cleared out, well explained. This is the first part, and the second part, to keep on being mothers and fathers, and this is very important because we need also this of them as doctors, not only for their children, and sometimes to tell us that it is too much. We cannot ask them to do this in addition to all the rest. And I think this is how we can go on into this personalized follow-up and the protocols and requests and personalized medicine, I insist on this. Today, the request and the needs of the patients, fortunately, are much well known and are in the front of what we are doing as doctors. So they should use this to go ahead and to put on the table their real needs and the real needs of their patients. Today we are in the era of internet and of diffuse knowledge. This, is, this has very good aspects because the families can understand things, they can share things with other families, but again they should always try to have this confident relationship with their physician because there are so many things 
on these social medias that might not fit for their child or for the pathology and the disease of their child. So the knowledge is important, but a knowledge within a frame should also be an important objective for the family. And this is why I urge them not to take decisions without discussion with their physician. And if there is a need without getting back to a reference center or a reference center, because today we have this in many countries in Europe, so we should use them to have this information. We have family associations that can help. So do not do things on your own, even believing that they are the right things, because sometimes they might not be.